Cognizant has recently created an intelligent generative AI assistant or factory whisperer tailored for smart manufacturing. This has been added as an additional layer on top of its existing industry Ford Auto Accelerator Cognizant Apex or Asset Performance Excellence. This assistant leveraging the power of generative and traditional AI helps to integrate real-time plan data consisting of operational and alarm data, traditional AI model insights, knowledge-based data consisting of standard operating procedures and manuals, PNID diagrams, and 3D models of the plant and equipment. Uh, on top of it, the assistant provides a natural language-based conversational interface using both text and voice. In the example workflow that we have created for demonstration, uh, we have investigated into a troubleshooting scenario of how this assistant can be leveraged by a plant operator or a maintenance engineer to identify a problem, identify its root cause, and quickly suggest how the problem can be solved, uh, leading to saving of valuable time, improve product yield and quality, and reduce wastages. Now this scenario has been built assuming a part of a process inside a corn wet mill. This process is responsible for extraction of oil from corn feed and is an important step in the whole process. Manufacturers track some of the key KPIs like oil in fiber uh, to track production output. If the value for example of this KPI is high, this indicates that the process is leaving more oil in the fiber. Hence. Uh, you know, impacting the yield. Now, as a production manager, uh, there are a couple of ways in which I can find out if there is a problem. I could get some alerts in my dashboard or my mobile, or I would be interested to know what is happening in my production. Either way, he can come now and open this conversational interface and just type a quick query which says, hey, what are the production issues in my Akron plant for today? And the model behind the scene understands the intent and the context of the question and from where the data has to be pulled. So for example, for this particular question, uh, it identifies that it needs to go and look for some of the real-time data coming from my production shop floor to understand if there are any underlying issues which systems have already identified. And it comes back with two uh, aspects which needs immediate focus. Uh, one of them is high oil in fiber, uh, which is, as I had mentioned, quite an important KPI to uh, figure out what is happening and how to fix. Now, once I have identified a problem, the next step is essentially to identify what is causing it, right? And in large organizations, <clears throat> typically such kind of informations are placed in standard operating procedures document. And the problem is there are multiple documents where the information is spread out for this. Uh, and the user has to have either experience or they need to go and spend time to figure out, you know, what should be the, why, why the problem could be occurring. So I can again go back and simply ask a question, what is the reason for high oil in fiber alarm? And again, you know, the system, uh, you know, through its orchestration layers, uh, goes in, to, to the right source, pulls out all the relevant information, and the model then summarizes and pro provides insights on what needs to be done. So in this case, <clears throat> it is saying that you know, usually this happens when the uh, the pump, you know, which is feeding into the hydro clone has a low feed pressure, um, which usually results in certain of these problems. Now. Still, just two questions uh, at this point of time, I have reached, identify a problem and reached to the cause of the problem. Uh, but before I really validate that this is a problem, there are a couple of steps I would want to take, either a plant operator or a, or a maintenance engineer, to see what is happening with the, this particular pump. So I can again ask the model to provide the real-time feed of the, of the, of the pump. Um, so if you see, there are two pumps which are feeding and one of them has a low feed pressure, which kind of validates my understanding on what the information I am getting uh, from my standard operating procedure. And apart from that, it also pulls all the relevant information about this pump from the knowledge base in terms of the PND ID diagram of the setup, the uh, pump curve essentially, and if there are certain important knowledge base articles or videos which are associated with it, everything in, in one single place. There are one more thing which um, I can do from here is uh, 
you know, apart from the real-time data of the pump, there is also a, uh, a traditional ML model which is running behind for that pump. So I can also go third level deep and say, should can I look at the health status of my K1 feed pressure pump uh, for which I have identified the issue, right? So this then brings all the insights produced by those models into one single place, which also indicates that the health status of this pump is bad. Uh, by looking at all the data which it is producing in terms of the flow, dynamic head, vibration, uh, some of the key aspects which it uncovers is essentially the high cavitation uh, which is occurring uh, and also calculations of the degradation and remaining useful life percentages, right? So this kinds of at this point of time uh, validates that this pump is really a problem and uh, and then I have to fix it. Now, one of the things which it identified uh, from the previous answer, which we saw, is, um, is 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 a problem around the pump. So the second question I can ask is, uh, how do I fix low feed pressure of the pump? Right. So I can ask this question now, in terms of fixing the problem. Then and and then it takes the context of which pump I am talking about goes and looks at all the manuals which are available in my repository and then you know brings out information around what needs to be done uh, with specific uh, steps uh, regarding that pump and then i can ask other questions if this is related to cavitation then i can ask also ask you know can you tell me how do i identify cavitation issues in the pump for example uh, and then it kinds of brings me the, the steps which I need to do to identify cavitation related issues uh, in the pump. Yeah, so it, it, it says these are the things you have to do. Now, what we have also tried to do is, uh, is also represent the whole plant also um, as a digital twin because we have also created a knowledge graph uh, of the entire you know, process of the plant. So I can also ask it to show me the digital uh, twin of an Akron plant where it brings a couple of uh, key information. One is uh, the knowledge graph, which essentially links all the processes of the plant and how they are integrated with each other. Uh, this becomes an important uh, aspect for me to understand the uh, what is linked to what in the plant uh, so that when I ask queries in, you know, in my conversational interface, I can understand the context or what process I am talking about. For example, I can ask that who, who, what is the parent process for, uh, you know, primary hydroclone, right? So it knows that primary hydroclone comes under the germ separation process. And apart from that, it also shows me the twin of that plant as well and each data point. So if you see over here, this is a K1 feed pressure pump, which is a uh, with, there's a red dot over here, which has been resultant as part of the uh, machine learning model output, which I showed you just a couple of minutes back, uh, which had indicated the problem in this particular pump, uh, which was leading to the high oil and fiber uh, KPIs. And then obviously all the uh, key uh, metrics related to the pump are also brought in uh, as part of the, as part of this particular dynamic dashboard creation as a resultant of what I am asking. So this was uh, this was something which we are working on. We are moving from a descriptive, uh, you know, approach of presenting data to more of a predictive approach. Uh, what we intend to do in future is to integrate some of these scenarios to the service management systems, like for example, ServiceNow, so that some automatic workflows could be triggered from here itself in terms of ticket generation, or some additional context can be brought in from some of the you know ticketing management systems back into the answers which we are receiving. Um, so th this is <clears throat> what we have done on the generative AI pieces on Apex. Thank you.